Chapter 47, Bowel Elimination Regular elimination of bowel waste products is essential for normal body functioning. Alterations in bowel elimination are often early signs or symptoms of problems within either the gastrointestinal or other body systems. Because bowel function depends on the balance of several factors, elimination patterns and habits vary among individuals. Understanding normal bowel elimination and factors that promote, impede, or cause alterations in elimination help the nurse to manage patients' elimination problems. The GI tract is a series of hollow mucous membrane-lined muscular organs. These organs absorb fluid and nutrients, prepare food for absorption and use by body cells, and provide for temporary storage of feces. The GI tract absorbs high volumes of fluids, making fluid and electrolyte balance a key function of the GI system. In addition to ingested fluids and foods, the GI tract also receives secretions from the gallbladder and pancreas. The large intestine is the primary organ of bowel elimination. The colon has three functions, absorption, secretion, and elimination. Peristaltic contractions move contents through the colon. Mass peristalsis pushes undigested food toward the rectum. These mass movements occur only three or four times daily, with the strongest during the hour after mealtime. The rectum contains vertical and transverse folds of tissue that help to control expulsion of fecal contents during defecation. Each fold contains veins that can become distended from pressure during straining. This distension results in hemorrhoid formation. The body expels feces and flatus from the rectum through the anus. Normal defecation begins with movement in the left colon, moving stool toward the anus. When stool reaches the rectum, the distension causes relaxation of the internal sphincter and an awareness of the need to defecate. At the time of defecation, the external sphincter relaxes and abdominal muscles contract, increasing intrarectal pressure and forcing the stool out. Normally, defecation is painless, resulting in passage of soft, formed stool. Straining while having a bowel movement indicates that the patient may need changes in diet or fluid intake or that there is an underlying disorder in GI function. Case Study Mr. Gutierrez resides in an assisted living apartment of a long-term care center. He keeps busy in his small garden plot and enjoys other activities of the center, such as nightly card games and outings to baseball games. He is 82 years old, widowed, and has lived in the area for longer than three years. His family, with whom he is quite close, is scattered across the country. He has one niece, who lives in the same town. Mr. Gutierrez feels he is in good health, as long as he eats green chili peppers every day, he believes he will remain healthy. What concerns would you have about Mr. Gutierrez's health? Older adults are predisposed to nutrient deficiencies due to a decline in total and resting energy requirements. As a result, there is a gradual reduction in food intake even though vitamin and mineral needs remain unchanged or increased. These deficiencies can put Mr. Gutierrez at risk for malnutrition and elimination problems. Because Mr. Gutierrez has a small kitchen in his apartment, he is able to make some of his favorite foods. His diet consists of flour and corn tortillas, beans, and rice. He likes most meats, but he prefers chicken and asado. For breakfast, he usually has huevos rancheros. Mr. Gutierrez has been hospitalized only twice, once for the flu and once for placement of a pacemaker. He presently takes three medications, digoxin, zestrel, and metamucil. What food groups may be missing from Mr. Gutierrez's diet? Could this have any effect on his bowel elimination? Mr. Gutierrez's diet appears to be lacking in fruits and vegetables. Fruits and vegetables supply dietary fiber, 
and fiber intake is linked to lower incidence of cardiovascular disease and obesity. Alternatively, a low-fiber diet can lead to constipation and even more serious health conditions, such as irritable bowel syndrome, Crohn's disease and colon cancer. The many factors that affect bowel elimination are listed. Knowledge of these factors helps to anticipate measures required to maintain a normal elimination pattern. For example, age influences bowel elimination. Infants have a smaller stomach capacity, less secretion of digestive enzymes, and more rapid intestinal peristalsis. In contrast, older adults may have decreased chewing ability. Because of this, peristalsis declines and esophageal emptying slows. Regular daily food intake helps maintain a regular pattern of peristalsis in the colon. Fiber in the diet provides the bulk in the fecal material. Bulk forming foods help remove the fats and waste products from the body. A fluid intake of 3 liters per day for men and 2.2 liters per day for women is recommended. Fluid liquefies intestinal contents by absorbing into the fiber from the diet and creating a larger, softer stool mass. Physical activity promotes peristalsis. Prolonged emotional stress impairs the function of almost all body systems. During emotional stress, the digestive process is accelerated and peristalsis is increased. Personal elimination habits influence bowel function. General anesthetic agents used during surgery cause temporary cessation of peristalsis. Following the gastrointestinal diagnostic procedure, changes in elimination such as increased gas or loose stools often occur until the patient resumes a normal eating pattern. Constipation is a symptom, not a disease, and there are many possible causes. Improper diet, reduced fluid intake, lack of exercise and certain medications can cause constipation. Fecal impaction results from unrelieved constipation. In cases of severe impaction, the mass extends up into the sigmoid colon. If not resolved or removed, severe impaction can result in intestinal obstruction. Diarrhea is an increase in the number of stools and the passage of liquid, unformed feces. Intestinal contents pass through the small and large intestine too quickly to allow for the usual absorption of fluid and nutrients. Irritation within the colon results in increased mucus secretion. As a result, feces become watery and the patient may have difficulty controlling the urge to defecate. Flatulence is an accumulation of gas in the intestines causing the walls to stretch. Fecal incontinence is the inability to control a passage of feces and gas from the anus. Many conditions cause fecal incontinence or diarrhea and it is important to identify precipitating conditions and refer to health care providers for medication management. Hemorrhoids are dilated, engorged veins in the lining of the rectum and can be either external or internal. Increased venous pressure from straining at defecation, pregnancy, heart failure, and chronic liver disease causes hemorrhoids. Case study continued. This afternoon Mr. Gutierrez has telephoned his niece for the fourth time. He reports, My bowels are locked up and haven't moved in the last two days. He ate a big meal the previous evening and now reports feeling all gassed up. His niece tried to explain about eating foods containing fiber and more vegetables. She reminded Mr. Gutierrez that the nursing student was coming later this afternoon, and he could talk to the student about his problem. What would you do if you were the student's nurse and Mr. Gutierrez were your patient? The student's nurse should speak to Mr. Gutierrez about increasing his water intake. Additionally, she can provide him with ways to increase fiber intake through consuming more fruits and vegetables. The student's nurse should also inform the primary care provider for Mr. Gutierrez of his current issue with constipation. Bowel Diversions 
Certain diseases or surgical alterations make the normal passage of intestinal contents throughout the small and large intestine difficult or inadvisable. When these conditions are present, a temporary or permanent opening, called a stoma, is surgically created by bringing a portion of the intestine out through the abdominal wall. These openings are called an ileostomy or colostomy depending on which part of the intestinal tract is used to create the stoma. The location of an ostomy determines stool consistency. A person with a sigmoid colostomy will have a more formed stool. The output from a transverse colostomy will be thick liquid to soft consistency. These ostomies are the easiest to perform surgically and are done as a temporary means to divert stool from an area of trauma or perianal wounds. They may also be a palliative diversion if obstruction from a tumor is present. With an ileostomy, the fecal effluent leaves the body before it enters the colon, creating frequent, liquid stools. Loop colostomies are reversible stomas that may be constructed in the ileum, or the colon. The end colostomy consists of a stoma formed by bringing a piece of intestine out through a surgically created opening in the abdominal wall, turning it down like a turtleneck and suturing it to the abdominal wall. The intestine distal to the stoma is either removed or sewn closed and left in the abdominal cavity. Case study continued. Vicky is the nursing student assigned to Mr. Gutierrez. She has been seeing him once a week for five weeks as part of a home health care clinical experience. They have developed a good rapport. Mr. Gutierrez's self-identified problems with his bowels are a frequent topic of conversation. As Vicky prepares to assess Mr. Gutierrez, she reflects on experiences with other home care patients. She recalls one patient who had elimination problems resulting from a diet consisting mainly of high-fat and high-carbohydrate foods. She believes her involvement with that patient may help in Mr. Gutierrez's care. What do you see as similarities between the problems of Vicky's former patient and Mr. Gutierrez's bowel problems? Mr. Gutierrez's diet is similar to one of Vicky's previous patients as it consists of high fat and high carbohydrates. Vicky should be able to utilize the knowledge and experience she obtained with a previous patient to provide care for Mr. Gutierrez. Other approaches. The ileoanal pouch anastomosis is a surgical procedure that is used in patients who need to have a colectomy for treatment of ulcerative colitis or familial adenopoliposis. In this procedure, the surgeon removes the colon, creates a pouch from the end of the small intestine, and attaches the pouch to the patient's anus. A continent ileostomy involves creating a pouch from the small intestine. This procedure is rarely done now. However, there are still patients who had this procedure in the past. The pouch has a continent stoma on the abdomen created with a valve that can be drained only when the patient places a large catheter into the stoma. The anti-grade continent enema or procedure is usually done in children with fecal soiling associated with neuropathic or structural abnormalities of the anal sphincter. A continence valve with an opening on the abdomen is surgically created in the intestine so that the patient or caregiver can insert a tube and give an enema, which comes out through the anus. Colonic evacuation begins about 10 to 20 minutes after the patient receives the enema fluid. Critical thinking. Successful critical thinking requires a synthesis of knowledge, experience, Information gathered from patients, critical thinking attitudes, and intellectual and professional standards. Clinical judgments require you to anticipate the information necessary, analyze the data and make decisions regarding patient care. In the case of bowel elimination, integrate the knowledge from nursing and other disciplines to understand the patient's response to bowel elimination alterations. Experience in caring for patients with elimination alterations helps you provide an appropriate plan of care. Use critical thinking attitudes such as fairness, 
confidence, and discipline when listening to and exploring the patient's nursing history. Apply relevant standards of practice when selecting nursing measures. Case study continued. Vicky reviews her class notes on the anatomy and physiology of the GI system. Vicky reviews the physiological changes that aging produces within the GI system such as loss of teeth, taste but atrophy, decreased secretion of gastric acid, and a slight decrease in small intestine motility. Vicky will thoroughly assess Mr. Gutierrez's dietary intake with a 24-hour diet recall. Being familiar with his Hispanic heritage, Vicky anticipates certain food preferences. She knows he does not like the food served at the center and frequently requests home-cooked tortillas and green chili peppers from his niece. What nursing diagnosis would you chose for Mr. Gutierrez? Answer. Constipation related to poor eating habits and insufficient fiber intake. Time for a quick quiz. A newly admitted patient states that he has recently had a change in medications and reports that stools are now dry and hard to pass. This type of bowel pattern is consistent with A. Abnormal defecation B. Constipation C. Fecal impaction D. Fecal incontinence The answer is B. Constipation. Case study continued. From their last visit, Vicky and Mr. Gutierrez have been able to communicate without difficulty. Mr. Gutierrez complains of feeling full of gas but has not passed any wind in the past two days. His stove has not been working well, and he has been unable to prepare rice and beans. Based on the nursing history, Vicky estimates that Mr. Gutierrez normally drinks about 1,200 milliliters of fluid daily. Why is daily fluid intake important? Fluid liquefies intestinal contents by absorbing into the fiber from the diet, and creating a larger, softer stool mass. Nursing process, the assessment. Apply the nursing process and use a critical thinking approach in your care of patients. The nursing process provides a clinical decision-making approach for you to develop and implement an individualized plan of care. During the assessment process, thoroughly assess each patient and critically analyze findings to ensure you make patient-centered clinical decisions required for safe nursing care. Consider all critical thinking elements that build toward making appropriate diagnoses. Assessment for bowel elimination patterns and abnormalities includes a nursing history, physical assessment of the abdomen, inspection of fecal characteristics and review of relevant test results. In addition, determine the patient's medical history, pattern and types of fluid and food intake, mobility, chewing ability, medications recent illnesses and or stressors, and environmental situation. Organize the nursing history around factors that affect elimination. Ask the patient about their elimination patterns such as frequency and time of day. What are their stool characteristics and routines? Are there any bowel diversions? Have they experienced any appetite changes? What is the daily amount of fluid intake? Ask about the patient's diet history, and if there is a history of surgery or illness. Inquire about past social history, current emotional state, and if they are having any pain or discomfort. Ask the patient for a list of all the medications they take and assess whether there are any such as laxatives, antacids, iron supplements, and analgesics that alter defecation or fecal characteristics. Inquire if their mobility requires use of any assistive devices, shown as Figure 47-6, the Bristol Stool Form Scale.
Conduct a physical assessment of body systems and functions likely to be influenced by the presence of elimination problems. Inspect the patient's teeth, tongue and gums. Poor dentition or poorly fitting dentures influence the ability to chew. Inspect all four abdominal quadrants. Auscultate the abdomen with a stethoscope to assess bowel sounds in each quadrant. Use percussion to identify underlying abdominal structures and detect lesions, fluid, or gas within the abdomen. Gently palpate the abdomen for masses or areas of tenderness. Inspect the area around the anus for lesions, discoloration, inflammation, and hemorrhoids. Hemoglobin and hematocrit may be done to determine if anemia from GI bleeding is present. Other laboratory tests that may be ordered by the health care provider include liver function tests, serum amylase and serum lipase which are used to assess for hepatobiliary diseases and pancreatitis. A common stool test is the fecal occult blood test, which measures microscopic amounts of blood in the feces. Direct visualization tests include endoscopy. Indirect visualization tests include an erectile manometry. X-rays with and without contrast medium, ultrasound, computed tomography scan or CT, colonic transit study, and magnetic resonance imaging. Some diagnostic tests require bowel preparation for the test to be successfully completed. In order to determine an accurate nursing diagnosis, Vicky must assess Mr. Gutierrez's abdomen, determine when he had his last bowel movement, and his medication history. She must also establish his dietary habits and routines. In order to determine an accurate nursing diagnosis, Vicky must assess Mr. Gutierrez's abdomen, determine when he had his last bowel movement, and his medication history. She must also establish his dietary habits and routines. The nursing assessment of the patient's bowel function reveals data that indicate an actual or potential elimination problem or a problem resulting from elimination alterations. Some diagnoses that apply to patients with elimination problems include disturbed body image, bowel incontinence, constipation, perceived constipation, risk for constipation, diarrhea, nausea, deficit knowledge. It is important to establish the correct related to factor for a diagnosis. Planning. When planning care, synthesize information from multiple resources. Help patients establish goals and outcomes by incorporating their elimination habits or routines as much as possible and reinforcing the routines that promote health. In addition, consider pre-existing health concerns. The overall goal of returning the patient to a normal bowel elimination pattern includes the following outcomes. Patient establishes a regular defecation schedule. Patient is able to list proper fluid and food intake needed to soften stool and promote regular bowel elimination. Patient implements a regular exercise program. Patient reports daily passage of soft, formed brown stool. Realize that patients may have several nursing diagnoses, which must be prioritized. The nurse and patient work together closely to plan effective interventions. A realistic time frame to establish a normal defecation pattern for one patient is sometimes very different for another. Other health team members such as dietitians and wound, ostomy, and continence nurses are often valuable resources. Case study continued. Mr. Gutierrez's nursing diagnosis is constipation related to less than adequate fluid and dietary intake and chronic laxative use. His goals are as follows. Mr. Gutierrez will establish and maintain a normal defecation pattern within one month. Mr. Gutierrez will identify practices that reduce the risk for or prevent constipation within two weeks. What expected outcomes would Vicky set to demonstrate achievement of these goals? Expected outcomes include 
Mr. Gutierrez will have a bowel movement within 48 hours. Mr. Gutierrez's abdomen will be soft, non-distended, and non-tender within 24 hours. Mr. Gutierrez will pass soft, formed stools at least every three days. Mr. Gutierrez will identify the need to increase the fiber content of his diet within one week. Mr. Gutierrez will immediately discontinue laxative use and will use fiber supplements when needed. Mr. Gutierrez will identify the need to drink 8 8 ounce glasses of non caffeinated beverages within 3 days. Implementation and Health Promotion Successful nursing interventions improve the patient's and family member's understanding of bowel elimination. One of the most important habits to teach regarding bowel habits is to take time for defecation. Advise the patient to begin establishing a routine during a time when defecation is most likely to occur, usually an hour after a meal. When diagnosed early, colorectal cancer can be treated and eliminated. Following the guidelines for prevention and knowing the early symptoms and seeking medical help if these symptoms occur is the most effective way to prevent death from this disease. A number of interventions stimulate the defecation reflex, affect the character of feces, or increase peristalsis to help patients evacuate bowel contents normally and without discomfort. Assist patients who have difficulty sitting because of muscular weakness and mobility problems. Elevated seats require patients to use less effort to sit or stand. Two types of bedpans are available for those patients restricted to bed. The regular bedpan, made of plastic, has a curved smooth upper end and a sharp ragged lower end and is about 5 cm or 2 inches deep. The smaller fracture pan, designed for patients with lower extremity fractures, has a shallow upper end about 2.5 cm or 1 inch deep. When positioning a patient, it is important to prevent muscle strain and discomfort. Never try to lift a patient onto a bedpan. Never place a patient on a bedpan and then leave with the bed flat unless activity restrictions demand it. This forces the patient to hyperextend the back to lift the hips onto the pan. The proper position for the patient on a bed pan is with the head of the bed elevated 30 to 45 degrees. When patients are immobile or it is unsafe to allow them to raise their hips, it is safest for the caregiver and the patient to roll them onto the bed pan. Always wear gloves when handling a bed pan. When patients are immobile or it is unsafe to allow them to raise their hips, they remain flat and roll onto the bed pen by using the following steps. Step 1. Lower the head of the bed flat, and help the patient roll onto one side, back side toward the nurse. Step 2. Apply a small amount of powder to back and buttocks, or cover bed pen edge with tissue to prevent skin from sticking to the pan. Step 3. Place the bed pan firmly against the buttocks, down into the mattress, with the open rim toward the patient's feet. Step 4. Keeping one hand against the bed pan, place the other around the patient's forehip. Ask the patient to roll back onto the pan, flat in the bed. Do not shove the pan under the patient. Step 5. With the patient positioned comfortably, raise the head of the bed 30 degrees. Step 6. Place a roll towel or a small pillow under the lumbar curve of the patient's back for added comfort. Step 7. Raise the knee gauge or ask the patient to bend the knees to assume a squatting position. Do not raise the knee gauge if contraindicated. As a supplement to this PowerPoint, please review Box 47-7, Screening for Colorectal Cancer. Box 47-8, Cultural Aspects of Care, Variables Influencing Colorectal Cancer Screening in African Americans and Box 47-9, Procedural Guidelines, Assisting Patient on and Off a Bedpan. Case Study Continued, Instruct Mr. Gutierrez in a Weekly Menu Plan, Including Foods High in Fiber, brown rice, 
beans and rice, tomatoes, and wheat tortillas. Add bra flakes, bra, or fiber supplement to Mr. Gutierrez's diet. Consult with Mr. Gutierrez Neeson Long-Term Care Center to have the patient's stove repaired. Educate Mr. Gutierrez about the use of liquids to promote softening of stool and defecation. Have him drink a decaffeinated beverage of choice. Encourage Mr. Gutierrez to try to establish a routine time for defecation, for example, after a meal. The following are rationales for each intervention. High fiber foods increase the bulk of fecal contents, which, in turn, increases peristalsis and improves the movement of intestinal contents through the GI tract. Bras flakes or fiber supplements add bulk to the feces and increase the number of soft formed stools. Dietary fiber, through diet or supplement, reduces the need for laxatives. Cooking facilities are necessary for preparation of selected food preferences. Caffeinated beverages cause the body to increase excretion of fluids and dehydrate the patient. Fluid help to keep the fecal mass soft and increase stool bulk, causing an increase in colon peristalsis. With aging, some normal changes are noted in rectal sensation, and the body needs larger volumes to elicit the sensation to defecate. Using the normal gastrocolic reflex, which results in movement of colon contents approximately one hour a meal, assists in establishing routine bowel habits. Acute care. Chronically ill and hospitalized patients are not always able to maintain privacy during defecation. In a hospital or extended care setting, Patients sometimes share bathroom facilities with a roommate. In addition, chronic illness may limit a patient's mobility and activity tolerance and require the use of a bedpan or bedside commode. Loxatives and cathartics have the short-term action of emptying the bowel. These agents are also used to cleanse the bowel for patients undergoing GI tests and abdominal surgery. Cathartics have a stronger and more rapid effect on the intestines than laxatives. Suppositories may act more quickly than oral medications. Antidiarrheal agents decrease intestinal muscle tone to slow the passage of feces. As a result, the body absorbs more water through the intestinal walls. Antidiarrheal agents that contain opiates must be used with caution because opiates are habit forming. An enema is the installation of a solution into the rectum and sigmoid colon. The primary reason for an enema is to promote defecation by stimulating peristalsis. The volume of fluid instilled breaks up the fecal mass stretches the rectal wall and initiates the defecation reflex. Enemas are also a vehicle for medications that exert a local effect on rectal mucosa. Enemas are most commonly used for the immediate relief of constipation. Emptying the bowel before diagnostic tests or surgery and beginning a program of bowel training. Cleansing enemas promote the complete evacuation of feces from the colon. They act by stimulating peristalsis through the infusion of a large volume of solution or through local irritation of the mucosa of the colon. They include tap water, normal saline, soap suds solution, and low volume hypertonic saline. Infants and children receive only normal saline because they are at greater risk for fluid imbalance. Oil retention enemas lubricate the feces in the rectum and colon. The feces absorb the oil and become softer and easier to pass. Carminative enemas provide relief from gaseous distension. They improve the ability to pass flatus. Medicated enemas contain drugs. An example is sodium polystyrene sulfonate, or KXalate used to treat patients with dangerously high serum potassium levels. Animals are available in commercially packaged, disposable units or with reusable equipment prepared before use. Sterile technique is unnecessary because the colon normally contains bacteria. However, wear gloves to prevent the transmission of fecal microorganisms. Explain the procedure, including the position to assume, 
precautions to take to avoid discomfort, and length of time necessary to retain the solution before defecation. If the patient needs to take the enema at home, explain the procedure to a family member. For a patient with an impaction, the fecal mass is sometimes too large to pass voluntarily. If a digital rectal exam reveals a hard stool mass in the rectum, it may be necessary to manually remove it by breaking it up and bringing out a section at a time. Digital removal should be the last resort in the management of severe constipation. When administering a cleansing enema, follow these steps. Place the bedpan nearby or the commode near the bed. Open the enema supplies or kit. Attach the tubing to the enema pail or solution bag if necessary. Close the clamp on the tubing and fill the container with 500 to 1,000 milliliters of warm solution. Check the water temperature with a bath thermometer. It should be 105 degrees to 110 degrees Fahrenheit. 40 to 43 degrees centigrade, or lukewarm, to minimize cramping. It is not safe to warm the solution in a microwave. Add Castile soap, or the soap solution used by your facility, to the fluid at this time if a soap suds enema has been prescribed. Squeeze gently to mix the soap. Hang the container on the IV pole. Holding the end of the tubing over a sink or waste can, open the clamp and slowly allow the tubing to prime with solution. When the tubing is filled, re-clamp it. Don clean non-sterile gloves. Ask or assist the patient to turn to a left side-lying position with the right knee flexed. Do not administer the enema with the patient on the toilet. The curved rectal tubing can scrape the rectal wall. Place the waterproof pad under the patient's buttocks or hips. Drape the patient with the bath blanket, exposing only the buttocks and rectum. Depending on the patient's mobility status, place the bedpan flat on the bed, directly beneath the rectum, up against the patient's buttocks. If needed, lubricate the tip of the enema tubing generously. If necessary, lift the superior buttock to expose the anus. Slowly and gently insert the tip of the tubing approximately 7 to 10 centimeters or 3 to 4 inches into the rectum. Have the patient take slow, deep breaths as you complete this step. If the tube does not pass with ease, do not force it. Allow a small amount of fluid to infuse and then try again, inserting the tube slowly. Remove the container from the IV pole and hold it at the level of the patient's hips, unclamp to begin instilling the solution. Slowly raise the level of the container so that it is 30 to 45 centimeters or 12 to 18 inches above the level of the hips. Adjust the pole and rehang the container. Continue a slow, steady installation of the enema solution. Continuously monitor the patient for pain or discomfort and ability to retain the solution. If the patient has difficulty retaining the solution, lower the container, stop the flow for 15 to 30 seconds, and then resume the procedure. When the correct amount of solution has been instilled, clamp the tubing and slowly remove it from the rectum. If there is stool on the tubing, wrap the end of the tubing in a disposable wipe or toilet tissue and dispose of it. Clean the rectal area, cover the patient, and instruct him to hold the enema solution for approximately 5 to 15 minutes. Be certain that the call light is within reach. Dispose of the enema supplies, or if they are reusable, clean and store them in an appropriate location in the patient's room. Remove your gloves and perform hand hygiene. When the patient needs to defecate, assist him onto the bedpan to the bedside commode or to the toilet. Perform hand hygiene and use clean procedure gloves as necessary. 
After the patient has defecated, clean the rectum and buttocks and remove the bedpan or assist the patient to bed. Inspect the stool for color, consistency, and quantity. Remove gloves, perform hand hygiene, and cover the patient. When you finish the procedure, remember the universal steps that apply after all procedures. For example, leave the patient in a safe, comfortable position with the call device in easy reach. For a prepackaged enema, Perform the same steps as for a cleansing enema, gloving, positioning, and so on, with the following differences. Open the package and remove the cap from the container. Clip the tip of the container if it does not have a hole in it. You may also need to add extra lubricant, even though the tip is pre-lubricated. To instill the solution, tilt the container slightly and slowly roll and squeeze the container until all of the solution is instilled. Withdraw the container tip from the rectum. Wipe the area with a disposable wipe or toilet tissue. Dispose of the empty container. A patient's condition or situation sometimes requires special interventions to decompress the GI tract. Such conditions include surgery, obstruction of the GI tract often caused by tumors, trauma to the GI tract, and conditions in which peristalsis is absent. A nasogastric tube is a pliable hollow tube that is inserted through the patient's nasopharynx into the stomach. Fine or small bore are frequently used for medication administration and enteral feedings. Large bore, 12 French and above, are used for gastric decompression or removal of gastric secretions. NG tube placement does not require sterile technique. After you insert the tube, you need to maintain its patency. Please review the PowerPoint for Chapter 45, Nutrition for the video on how to insert a nasogastric tube. Time for a quick quiz. To maintain normal elimination patterns in the hospitalized patient, you should instruct the patient to defecate one hour after meals because a. the presence of food stimulates peristalsis, b. mass colonic peristalsis occurs at this time, c. Irregularity helps to develop a habitual pattern. D. Neglecting the urge to defecate can cause diarrhea. Answer. B. Rationale. Mass peristalsis pushes undigested food toward the rectum. These mass movements occur only three or four times daily, with the strongest during the hour after meal time. Continuing in restorative care, it is important to remember that you initiate ostomy care and bowel retraining in acute care settings. However, because these are long-term care needs, teaching is usually continued in restorative care or home settings. An individual with an ostomy wears a pouch to collect effluent or output from the stoma. The pouches are odor-proof and have a protective skin barrier surrounding the stoma. Empty the pouch when it is one-third to one-half full. Change the pouching system approximately every three to seven days, depending upon the patient's individual needs. After surgery it may take a few days for patients with new ostomies to feel their appetite has returned to normal. Small servings of soft foods may be more appetizing as it would be for any patient who has had an abdominal surgery. Typically, Patients with colostomies have no diet restrictions. After ostomy surgery, patients face a variety of anxieties and concerns, from learning how to manage their stoma to coping with conflicts of self-esteem, body image, and sexuality. Provide emotional support before and after surgery.
When changing an ostomy appliance, follow these steps. In this procedure, we will demonstrate a pouch with the wafer attached. Some pouches do come without the wafer attached. Clean or cover a work surface. Perform hand hygiene and don clean non-sterile gloves. Fold down the bed covers to expose the ostomy site. Place a moisture-resistant pad or clean towel across the patient's abdomen under the existing pouch. Position the patient so that no skin folds occur along the line of the stoma. If the present ostomy pouch is drainable, remove the pouch and empty it into the bedpan. If the ostomy drainage consists of liquid effluent, empty and measure it in a graduated measuring container. If the pouch is opened by unrolling it at the bottom, remove the clamp to empty the pouch. Save this clamp for reuse. Remove the appliance by applying a silicone-based adhesive remover with one hand as you press the skin away from the wafer barrier with your other hand. Avoid pulling the appliance straight off. Begin at the top and work downward. Do not use alcohol or oil-based solvents to remove the adhesive. Place the old pouch and wafer in a plastic bag for disposal. If the pouch is not a drainable one, dispose of it according to agency protocol. Inspect the stoma and peristomal skin area for redness, rash, irritation, or excoriation. Remove your gloves and perform hand hygiene. Cleanse the stoma and surrounding skin with a skin cleansing agent with a pH of 5.5 that is designed to both cleanse and moisturize the skin. To measure the size of the stoma, place a standard stoma measuring guide over the stoma. You can also reuse a previously cut template or measure the stoma from side to side to approximate the circumference. Place a clean 4-inch by 4-inch gauze pad over the stoma. Trace the size of the opening onto the paper on the back of the new wafer. Cut the opening. The opening in the wafer should be approximately 1 16th to 1 8th inch or 1.5 to 3 millimeters larger than the circumference of the stoma. Hold the wafer between the palms of your hand to warm the adhesive ring. After cutting, hold the opening over the stoma to be sure it will fit properly. If the ostomy wafer has an outer ring of tape attached, do not remove the backing on this tape until the wafer is securely positioned. Apply ostomy skin care products at this time using your clinical judgment, hospital protocol, or the recommendations of the enterostomal therapist. Wipe around the stoma with skin prep, then apply skin barrier powder or paste, or apply extra adhesive paste. Peel the paper off the wafer. Next, center the wafer opening around the stoma and gently press it down. Apply a clean ostomy bag. Point the bag inferiorly so that it can drain more easily. Press your hand firmly against the newly applied wafer and hold for 30 to 60 seconds. Remove your gloves and perform hand hygiene. Return the patient to a comfortable position. Dispose of the used ostomy pouch following your facility's policy for biohazardous waste. When you finish the procedure, remember the universal steps that apply after all procedures. For example, place the call device in easy reach. Continuing in restorative care, the patient with chronic constipation or fecal incontinence secondary to cognitive impairment may benefit from bowel training, also called habit training. The training program involves setting up a daily routine, by attempting to defecate at the same time each day and using measures that promote defecation, the patient may have a normal defecation pattern. In choosing a diet for promoting normal elimination, consider the frequency of defecation, characteristics of feces, and types of foods that impair or promote defecation. A well-balanced diet with whole grains, legumes, Fresh fruits and vegetables eaten regularly promotes normal elimination. Fiber adds bulk to the stool, eliminates excess fluids and promotes more frequent and regular movements. With increasing fiber it is important to drink enough fluids. A daily exercise program helps prevent elimination problems. Walking, riding a stationary bicycle, or swimming stimulates peristalsis. In the management of the patient with fecal incontinence or diarrhea, a fecal collector may be applied around the anal opening if the skin is intact. 
Fecal management systems are available for short-term use with high-volume diarrhea. They are intended for use primarily in acute care settings. The patient with diarrhea, fecal incontinence, or an ileostomy is at risk for skin breakdown when fecal contents remain on the skin. Liquid stool usually contains digestive enzymes that can cause rapid skin breakdown. Irritation from repeated wiping with toilet tissue or frequent ostomy pouch changes further irritates the skin. Meticulous perianal skin care and frequent removal of fecal drainage is necessary to prevent skin breakdown. When applying an external fecal collection system, follow these steps. Assist the patient to a side-lying position and drape to expose the buttocks. For successful application, without leakage, it is best to have one caregiver position the patient and a second person apply the device. Don procedure gloves. Cleanse the perineal area and dry well. If perianal hair is present, trim it away. Spread the buttocks apart to expose the rectum. Remove the backing from the self-adhesive fecal bag, then apply it, being careful to place the opening in the bag over the anus and to avoid gaps and creases. Release the buttocks. Connect the fecal incontinence pouch to a drainage bag. Hang drainage bag below the patient. When you finish the procedure, remember the universal steps that apply after all procedures. For example, leave the patient in a safe, comfortable position with the call device in easy reach. Case study continued. When asked about his intake, Mr. Gutierrez describes likes and dislikes but admits to eating high-fat foods and few fruits and vegetables. His stated fluid intake is around 1,400 milliliters per day. When asked about his elimination pattern and laxative use over the past two weeks, Mr. Gutierrez replies, I still go about the same, but states he thinks he now goes about every two days. Additionally, he has not used laxatives in the past week. Follow-up visits should include an abdominal assessment and examination of stool, if possible. During this visit, Mr. Gutierrez states stool is formed, but not hard like before. Bowel sounds are normal, and abdomen is soft and non-tender without distension. Evaluation the effectiveness of care depends on success in meeting the expected outcomes of self-care. Optimally, the patient will be able to have regular, pain-free defecation of soft-formed stools. The patient or caregiver is the only one who is able to determine if the bowel elimination problems have been relieved and which therapies were the most effective. If the nurse establishes a therapeutic relationship with the patient, the patient feels comfortable in discussing the intimate details often associated with bowel elimination. Patients are less embarrassed as nurses help them with elimination needs. Evaluate a patient's level of knowledge regarding establishing a normal elimination pattern, caring for an ostomy and promoting skin integrity. Also determine the extent to which the patient accomplishes normal defecation. Ask the patient to describe changes in diet fluid intake, and activity to promote bowel health. Case study continued. Vicky returns to see Mr. Gutierrez two weeks later. Vicky is eager to determine whether her patient has made changes in his diet, and if his problems with bowel elimination have been progressing. Vicky is also eager to learn if his stove has been repaired. Mr. Gutierrez tells Vicky that he has been eating cereal in the morning, has been eating rice and or beans for dinner, and has added one fruit each day to his diet. He states that he has been walking twice a day through the long-term care center. 
Although he does not have a bowel movement each day, his stools are much softer and easier to pass, and he says he is less concerned. He has not taken a laxative for a stool since last talking with Vicky. What information should Vicky include in the documentation note? The documentation notes should include, bowel elimination is improving, abdomen is soft and non-distended, bowel sounds are normal and audible in all quadrants. After discussing the teaching plan, patient has agreed to alter his eating habits to include more fiber, fruit, and fluids. Although concern over bowel habits has not ceased, patient states that he feels in better control and has decreased his laxative use, and, that the niece assists in having stove repaired. Ensuring patient safety is an essential role of the professional nurse. To ensure patient safety, communicate clearly with members of the health care team, assess and incorporate the patient's priorities of care and preferences and use the best evidence when making decisions about your patient's care. Instruct patients who self-administer enemas to use the side-lying position. Tell them not to self-administer an enema while sitting on the toilet because this position results in the rectal tubing, causing friction that could injure the rectal wall. If a patient has cardiac disease or is taking cardiac or hypertensive medication, obtain a pulse rate, because manipulation of rectal tissue stimulates the vagus nerve and sometimes causes a sudden decline in pulse rate, which increases the patient's risk of fainting while on the bedpan bedside commode, or toilet.